In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do the miniature. This is the smallest size version of the miniature pumpkins that we have on file. Let's begin that right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. We have this great little pattern here and it has two sizes of miniature pumpkins and today it is the smallest size. So we already have a tutorial available on YouTube for the larger size of this. Now the uh, smaller size starts down here at the bottom and the instructions goes to the top. It is a difference of a, a few rounds and uh, we can do some finishing techniques in order to do it. So this here is the larger size that you have. So this is showing you a proportion on how small it is. And I've substituted my yarn instead of the Lily Sugar and Cream. I'm using Bernat Super Value and this color is called Pumpkin. So without further ado, let's grab some yarn. You'll need a five, four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play along today. So let's begin and make a slip knot. Remember that the slip knot never counts as one. Let's start, insert our size G four millimeter crochet hook and let's create four chains. This never counts as one as I just said. So chain four, one, two, three, and four. Insert your hook into the starting chain, the beginning chain, yarn over and pull through and then you'll have a center ring of the top of your pumpkin. Let's begin the first round and we're gonna chain one and then inside the center of the ring you are gonna put eight single crochets. Let's count those out together. So that was one and two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then all you just need to do, go into the starting single crochet, insert your hook and pull through and through and that's a slip stitch to finish that round. Let's begin round number two. Round number two we are going to chain one and then we're gonna put two single crochets into each stitch going all the way around. So just one and two. So I always like to count that out to make sure I don't miss. So that was one and so I'm gonna put two into each one and so I go the next two is for two, the next two is for three, next two is for four, next two is for five, Next two is for six, next two is for seven, next two is for eight. And once I have that done I can say, say that's eight. I can just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet to finalize that round. Rounds three and four are identical. You just have to chain up one and that's just one single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. Please do this for rounds three and four. So one single crochet into each. So three and four are now done and you can see it's nice and bold up now and now it's time to ready to go for round number five. Round number five says chain one and it says single crochet together and then one single crochet in the next two. So what we have to do, we've already chained one, we go into the first stitch, pull through, go into the next stitch, pull through and then you have three loops on your hook, pull through all three and that's a um, single crochet two together and then it says two single crochet in the next two. Okay, so the repeat pattern on this round is that the next one is a together. So go through, go through the next one, pull through, pull through and then the next two are single crochets each. Do that all the way around. If your counts are right, the final two stitches of this round will be one single crochets each before joining it to the top of the first two together. We need our stuffing at this point and we just gotta lightly stuff this um, and I'll be right back and I'll do that off camera. So I've now stuffed my pumpkin. You can see it's nice in there. I don't wanna get the stuffings trapped in between any of these stitch work so I kinda use my finger and push it down when I'm going into a stitch. Let's move on to round number six. Round number six says chain one and it says two, two, uh, single crochet two together six times. So we go into the next one and do two together and we keep doing that all the way around. So we don't put any single crochets anywhere uh, by itself. So the next one's two together. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I wanna slip stitch to the top of the first 
uh, single crochet two together and now I just have a few stitches left. So as of round seven it says to chain one and we're going to put in a single crochet together um, three times in a row. So there's only six stitches left. Therefore you only need to do this three times complete. And then we're gonna do some finishing techniques to make this look more like a pumpkin. This is the bottom of the pumpkin that we're finishing up of. Okay, so I've done all three. I'm just gonna leave a bit of an extra long tail and I'm gonna grab my darning needle. So I'm just gonna pull up on this at this point and I am going to put in my darning needle. I wanna secure this into position. I wanna do a nicer look even though it's on the reef. You may not be doing a wreath so you might want to do something for something else. So you just wanna push it in going across the final base like so. And if you'd go in a minimum of three times the project can never and it's in different directions. The project can never uh, stretch in all different directions at the same time to make this come loose. It's one of the advantages of it. So this is what it looks like at this point. So this is the top of the pumpkin. I'm not so worried about this little uh, um, idea here. We need to do a stem and um, we need, need to do some finishing techniques as well. So at this point this is the miniature of the miniature and this is the larger one of the miniature but this one still looks like it's squatted. This one hasn't been squatted yet so we're gonna do that as well. But let's uh, begin to do the stem first in order to make it work. Let's begin to do the stem. Leave this as an extra long tail so you can deal with it after. The stem is really quite easy. <laughs> I actually thought it was a mistake in the pattern. It was so easy but then when you see it done because it's a miniature it just makes sense. So let's uh, do it and by the way it's the sta same stem for both of the pumpkin sizes. So let's go. It's gonna chain three. Remember that the um, slip knot never counts as one. So one, two, three. Coming to the second chain from the hook just slip stitch in and then the final chain slip stitch. Pull through and through and now leave an extra long tail so you can use that as the sewing into the project when we're ready for that. So that you'll have to put this aside until we're ready for the next part. Okay, so that is your stem and it will stick up from your pumpkin just like that. So we're now ready to do the pumpkin shaping itself and we're gonna need a darning needle for this and we're going to put lines around the outside of the pumpkin to create the, the ridges. One side we're just gonna create a slip knot and I'll show you why in just a moment. So I want you to start off by coming, so this is the nice side. You can really clearly see it's a nicer side than the bottom side. Um, so this is the side that you would want facing up. So I want you to come on the bottom side and go straight through the pumpkin, right through to the space in the middle. Like so. And I want you to pull this but don't pull all the way through. I want you to keep a little loop that you're going to go. So go around the outside of the pumpkin and through that loop. Just use your fingers to stabilize it and keep that knot toward the bottom. And I want you to kind of pull up on it so it causes it. So right now it's just cause it to sink in a little bit more. Okay, so you're gonna create this shape. It just has to be subtle enough to believe to be believable that it's a pumpkin. Now once you have that done just come up through the bottom side again. Go back to the top to the same gapping space and just rotate it a little bit. They ask you to do five of these ridges. So just make it look good. You can always move a ridge if it's not exactly where you wanted it to be. You just grab your crochet hook and just slide it. So just reef on it, pull it up, go back around the bottom back to the top. Okay and I just keep rotating around and just because it asks for a five doesn't mean you have to do only five. You can do more if you wanted to. You can do less. It's your project. You can decide what's right for you. They always say when you're going to do anything it looks better if it's always an odd number. Okay, so there you go. 
So now that I've done that I'm going to go down through a piece of the fiber on the top side. So I'm not going down through the, the middle completely. I'm going down through some fibers on the top to make sure that it stays and then coming up through the bottom. And now I'm going to secure it underneath on the bottom. So by going the three method like I've already shown you before on several tutorials your project string should never fall out. So of course I've squatted it down by pulling it tight. If you don't like it so squatted don't pull it so tight. <laughs> it's basically your creativity right? Okay now that it's in I'm going to just trim it at this point. So if any of these strands are not working for you just grab your crochet hook and just move them around. So just kind of go up underneath the strand and just kind of shift it. Now let's grab our stem. So the stem is ready to go. Again grabbing your darning needle. And now this time we started from the bottom going back to the top for doing the the ridge work. This time we wanna start from the top and go down. Okay but I wanna make sure that I catch it in some fibers. So don't go right directly down into the center. Catch it into some fibers first before going down. Because if you don't it's it'll sink into that middle section. Okay and then come back up. So just go in a different spot on the bottom back up to the top. And I did this for the other one too. So just grab it around some of the fibers of the stem area as you come back up. And now no di nose dive back down in. Now obviously it's not a big pumpkin so you don't need a lot of extra securing. It's not like it's heavy. So now just secure it underneath back and forth three times. Remember the trick for that is that it has to go in different fibers when you go back and forth. So you can't go in the ex exact same path. Okay so I can trim that off. Now I told you to leave an extra long tail when we started and the reason for that is that you have to bury that too. So if it's too short you're gonna have a hard time trying to get rid of it. So just putting it in and just nose dive it in to your project right to the other side. It's already locked into place anyway. So it just has to go through your project just to hide it and then you can trim your work. And so that's how you do a miniature smaller versus the other one. So it's even smaller than the original. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see ya. Bye bye now.